the Johnson's Wax Program with Fibber McGee and Molly. <laughs> Johnson's Wax Products for Home and Industry present Fibber McGee and Molly with Bill Thompson, Gail Gordon, Arthur Q. Bryan, and me, Harlow Wilcox. The script is by Don Quinn and Phil Leslie. Music by the King's Men and Billy Mills Orchestra. <laughs> Homemakers have found a better way to keep their furniture and white woodwork looking bright, clean, and beautiful. They've found that Johnson's Cream Wax is an easier way, a faster way, a brighter way. Cream Wax is a new product and a vast improvement over old-fashioned oily furniture polishes. Oil leaves furniture sticky. Oil catches dust and makes furniture dull and drab. The new Johnson's Cream Wax does not contain one single drop of oil, not a drop. This creamy white liquid is a combination of genuine wax and effective cleaning ingredients. When you apply Cream Wax, the cleaning ingredients remove every trace of dust and fingerprints. At the same time, it polishes to a bright, gleaming luster. Your furniture and light woodwork will be richer and brighter. That hard wax film protects it and makes it easy to keep clean, too. Try cream wax on refrigerators and enameled kitchen equipment. They'll stay clean and bright longer. Ask for Johnson's Cream Wax to bring out the beauty of your home. Look on the bright side, shine up the right side, bring out the beauty of the great chemist and inventor were lost in Mr. McGee of 79 Wistful Vista. The only trouble is they won't stay lost because here he is at it again in a homemade laboratory working out a homemade idea as we meet Fibber McGee and Molly. No, that won't do it. Too much H27W4 in the HO3, I guess. Releases the Adriatic acid. Now, let me see. McGee. Beginning to get a good sweet fragrance, though. For a while, it smelled like the Russians had held an election in here. McGee. Take it easy now, McGee. The world is waiting for this. Richard Hudnut was no flash in the pan. Cody didn't pop up overnight. You can do it, McGee. Stick to it. Remember how the little key slid patiently down the kite string till it discovered Benjamin Franklin? McGee. All I gotta do is be patient. Now let's try formula number 48 again. That's the one with the turpentine base. McGee! <laughs> My gosh, kiddo. You startled me out of five years' growth. How long have you been standing there? I don't know. What month is this? <laughs> this is May 19th. Wait till I pick this stuff up, Snooky. Lucky I had the rug took up and my raincoat threw down. Boy, get a whiff of that alcohol. Better stuff something under the door, as Uncle Dennis will smell this clear from Denver. <laughs> yeah, there we are. Were you speaking to me, kiddo? Only about 55 minutes. Oh. I've got one question. What are you doing? I'm inventing a cologne. For men. <laughs> Why? <laughs> a good question. Because men, my dear, spend $32 million a year for clones, lotions, hair tonics, and various cosmetics. I want to cut myself in on that dough. And I got a great idea. Getting a hunk of $32 million is as good an idea as you'll ever have. I mean, I got an idea for a new clone. Look, men want to smell good, but they also want to be masculine, you see? Yeah. So I says to myself, I says, what's as masculine as a thing as there is, I says? Baseball, I says. So... I'm whipping up a new men's cologne that smells like a baseball game. <laughs> ah, yes. The piney fragrance of a first baseman's glove. <laughs> Combined with the spicy tang of a wet dugout. Right. If I can extract the odors of popcorn, salted peanuts, cigar smoke, and chewing gum... And add the scent of green grass and alcohol rubs, I'll have me a cologne that no red-blooded American boy between the ages of 16 and 96 can resist. <laughs> what are you going to call this boon to the bleachers? Well... Pops fly spray? <laughs> Glove in bloom? <laughs> or my error? <laughs> I 
here. Well, I haven't got a name for it yet, but I'm going to package it in big bottles shaped like a catcher's mitt with a hole in the thumb. <laughs> what do you think of it? Well, I don't know, dearie. I, well, <laughs> I'm a little stunned. Me the too. whole idea is so magnificent. Wow. That... Come in. Oh, it's Mr. Williams, the weatherman, McGee. Hello, Mr. Williams. Hello, Mrs. McGee. Hello, McGee. Hi, Fogg. You'll pardon me if I resume my work, old man. I'm uh, mixing up a formula. Oh, go right ahead. Very interesting atmosphere you've created in here. Hmm? What are you mixing up? Termite poison? <laughs> <laughs> He's inventing a new cologne for men, Mr. Williams. Yep. Uh, you always smell nice. Uh, what cologne do you use? Bay rum. Oh? I don't uh, don't care for it particularly, but my brother-in-law, Ray, gave me a truckload of it in 1929. <laughs> and I'm trying to use it up. A truckload of bay rum? What was your brother-in-law, a wholesale barber or something? No, no, a bay rum runner. Huh? <laughs> this was the last boatload he ran in. Mm, got caught, did he? Yes, yes. Ray was a dumb bay rum runner and got caught on the bay with some bum bay rum. But the bay rum... He ran oh, hey, 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 hold, hold the phone there. Hey, wait a minute. You're getting into my territory there, sir. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know you were a bay rum runner, too. Oh, he isn't, Mr. Williams. It's just that he... Quiet, please, now. Quiet a minute, folks. I, I got to concentrate. Now, let me see. Four drops of 9-HW to the W6PH3... That ought to give me a positive reaction of 7TJ12. Hmm. Aha. Aha. There we are. You see that green liquid, Foggy? Yes. What is it? That's the purple liquid that I put the vanilla into. <laughs> Turned green. <laughs> Interesting reaction, wasn't it? Very. Hmm. What was the purpose of it, dearie? I don't know. I didn't have any purpose. <laughs> I'm just messing around till something smells good. <laughs> You, uh, you say you're inventing a new men's cologne, McGee? Yep. I'm going to capture the essence of American baseball and bottle it, Foggy. Masculine but entrancing. Isn't that a wonderful idea, Mr. Williams? It is indeed, and I know McGee can do it. Really, Foggy? Why do you think so? Because for many years, McGee, I ran a weather observation station in the Rocky Mountains. What that got to do with the... Well, I still remember the stimulating smell of the evergreens, the cedars, the pines, the firs, the balsams. Oh, how they released their fragrance as the warm sun and the gentle rain brought out their natural aromatic juices. And you mean McGee is as strong and healthy as an evergreen tree, Mr. Williams? No. No, but he's just as sappy. <laughs> Good day. <clears throat> Probably. Billy Mills in the orchestra, and better luck next time.
fall cologne progressing, McGee. Great, great, great. I mixed up some stuff here that smells exactly like rain falling on center field with the faint nostalgic fragrance of hot dogs and mustard in the background. Oh. Here, take us a nip. Mm. Ain't that clean and outdoorsy? I'm getting it, kiddo. Only had a good name for it. Perfumes and colognes sell on the strength of their names, you know. Say, how about SWAT? Hmm? Put some on and please the babe. <laughs> That's not quite it. You keep working on it, though, Snooky. You work on the name and I'll work on the cologne. Now, let me see. Gee, I wish I had some verdigris. Some what? Verdigris. That's some very expensive stuff they use as a base for perfumes. It's produced by whales. No, no, that's ambergris theory. Huh? Verdigris is that green mold that for- forms on bronze statues and things. Oh. Well, statues are easier to find than whales. <laughs> I'll sneak down to the park tonight and scrape some off of Horace Greeley. <laughs> he won't care. He's a good kid. I can... Now, whoever that is, get rid of him quick as you can. I got work to do. Yes, sir. Come in. Hello, mm. Dr. Gamble. Do come in. Thank you, my dear. Hello, short, dark, and otherwise indescribable. Hi, Crib Crowder. (laughs) How come you're away from the hospital? Lose somebody's liver on the cutting room floor? (laughs) Or just get tired of chasing the pretty nurses down the long, dark hall? Now, McGee, that's no way to talk to the good doctor. It's the only way to talk to this doctor. Make an intelligent remark around him and he stares at you less suspiciously like you, too, had cheated your way through the eighth grade. (laughs) Our lovely friendship must be ripening into a nodding acquaintance, Scoop Snoot. (laughs) This is the first time you've admitted that I got as far as the eighth grade. What's that odor? (laughs) Smells like a bunch of violets being crushed by a wet bathing suit. Cologne himself is mixing up, Doctor. He's trying to find one that smells like a baseball game. Yeah. Well, keep trying, Sonny. This one smells more like the midget auto races. <laughs> Don't you worry, Fatso. I'll get it sooner or later. I'll get it. You know what? He says men spend more than $32 million a year just on colognes and lotions, Doctor. Imagine that. And he wants some of that money. A very laudable ambition, I'm sure. So that's what all these bottles and things are for. Yep. He's a perfumer. Yep. The perfect racket for anybody as nosy as he is. <laughs> what do you think of my great idea, Doc? Whip up a men's cologne that smells like a baseball game, masculine, exciting, clean, and healthy. Take the fragrance of the popcorn and peanuts, the hot dogs and mustard, the cigars and the root beer. Combine them odors with the sharp, tantalizing fragrance of leather, the grand, earthy smell of the new-mown grass, and the rich scent of new wool uniforms. How can you beat it? I'll show you. Like this. <laughs> Left in the hospital. Maybe he doesn't like cologne, McGee. To him, anything that don't smell like either chloroform or carbolic ain't worth inhaling. <laughs> oh, well, hand me that bottle over there, will you, Snooky? This little tiny one? Yeah. What's in that? Looks very sinister. That's my own extract of leather. A dash of this gives it that leathery smell. I'd let you smell it, but it's too concentrated. You made that? Yep, chopped it up, mashed it down, boiled it, and distilled it. This is the pure essence. What did you use? Well, you remember that Airedale Mort Toops had? McGee, you didn't. No, no, no you no. didn't. Mort gave me his old leather leash. Oh. <laughs> oh, his leather leash. Yeah. Hey, you thought of a name for my baseball cologne yet? Yes, I have. You have? Well, what is it? My gosh, kid, a good snappy name is half the battle. What's your suggestion? Well, how about Winning Run? Huh? Winning Run, the cologne that steals home with its clean American fragrance. Say, hey, that's good, but I don't like it. <laughs> Stealing home makes it sound like it was a shame to come in the front door. I think we ought to keep working on it. Besides, Hello, Molly. Hiya, pal. Hello, Mr. Wilcox. Hi. Junior, hey, what cologne do you use? Oh, some stuff called Redwood. The discriminating man's personal toiletry that invites closer acquaintance. Oh, how cute. Like the cedar-scented air of a cool forest. I got it for Christmas. (laughs) What does it smell like? Tar. Well, Mr. Wilcox, now, if you had your druthers, uh, would you rather be mistaken for a redwood tree or the Yankee Stadium? No, I don't know. Why? Well, himself here is working on a new man's cologne that will smell like a baseball game. Yeah, are you a baseball fan, Junior? Oh, sure. Also football, basketball, golf, polo, poker, rummy, charades, run, sheep, run, and pro-pre. Pro-pre? 
What's that? Propre? Yeah. Well, that's sort of an abbreviation for protect and preserve. Oh. <laughs> You use Johnson's Wax. And any number of people can oh, play. Oh, for the... The rules, the rules are very simple. Oh. You just apply the Johnson's Wax to wooden enamel surfaces, floors, furniture, and woodwork, lampshades, leather goods, white kitchen equipment, in fact, almost any surface that should be protected against dust and dirt and dampness. Yes, but Mr. Wilcox, what we were saying... Easy game. The is... easy game. And it has millions of enthusiastic players, particularly housewives. Ah. And particular housewives. Ah. And the funny part of playing this game is... The funny part of playing this game is that... You can't lose. You always win prizes of health and cleanliness and that look of sparkling hospitality, that warm and mellow luster that homes large and small. Whoa, oh, 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 always... oh, look, look. Waxy. Yes, pa- Oh, you want to tell me about this new cologne. Go ahead. Do, pal. Hmm? I mean, do, McGee. Well, it, it's very simple, Junior. What appeals most to the American male? The American female. <laughs> Besides that. I don't know. Well, baseball. Well, yes, I guess so. You guess so? Why, it's the national pastime. Think of the excitement of a World Series. Think of capturing that excitement, that blood-tingling, screaming vitality of a ball game in a bottle of cologne. Would you buy a cologne that held the fragrance of a baseball game suspended in its liquid depth, Mr. Wilcox? Nope. <laughs> and why not? Because if it's as bad as it sounds, I wouldn't have to. Hmm? Some lint head would give it to me for Christmas. <laughs> Good luck with it, pal. Goodbye, Molly. Ah, dear, a scoffer. It's a regrettable thing, my dear, that one's best friends are the ones who have the least faith in one when one is doing one's best to make something of myself. My very words. Yep. And if you'll excuse me, who began? I must go upstairs and sort the laundry. Aye. Let me know if there's anything I can do to help. Yeah, and let me know if you think up another good name for my cologne. Ah, there goes a good kid. Steady as the rock at Gibraltar and just as ready to take a shot at somebody. Sometimes I'm... Come in. Hi, mister. Oh, hi, Teeny. <laughs> Sit down and don't jump around now. I'm working on some very delicate chemical problems. Oh. Gee, it huh. sure smells funny in here, mister. Hmm? Kind of good, but kind of funny. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's explainable, Teeny. I'm mixing up some cologne. That's what I... Hmm? I says I'm mixing up some cologne. You know what cologne is. Sure I do, I bet you. That's the stuff girls put on their ears to keep boys on their toes. <laughs> <laughs> what flavor of cologne are you going to make, Mr. Hmm? Carnation or Violet or what? Baseball. Oh, boy. Baseball. Mm-hmm. I love baseball, Miss. You do? Gee, was that ever a ball game at the ballpark today, I bet you? At the ballpark? Were you out the ballpark today? Sure. Mm-hmm. Oh, boy, did things happen. Yeah? It was the last half of the ninth inning, and mm-hmm. Wistful Vista was behind six to four, yeah. and the bases were loaded, and our heaviest hitter came up to bat. Yeah, yeah. What happened? Well, the pitcher wound up and threw the ball, yeah. and an usher bumped my elbow, and I got my face stuck in my box of popcorn. When I got it unstuck, the game was over. <laughs> No kidding. Uh, who won? I did. Hmm? I got three boxes of popcorn and my ticket back if I'd stop squalling and go home. Well, that sounds like a big day. Hey, wait a minute. Didn't you have school today, sis? Sure. Only my teacher let me out at noon, I'm bad. Let you out at noon? Sure. When I told her about my grandpa got hit by a car and they took him to the hospital, oh. she said, That's terrible. You may go, Teeny. Oh. That's me, Teeny, you know. Yeah. Well, that's too bad, sis. How'd your grandpa get hurt? Well, he was running for a horse car, and he stepped in front of a Stanley steamer. And... Oh, oh, oh. A horse car? St- hey, when did all this happen? I'm glad my teacher didn't ask me that. It was 1902, Mr. Oh, oh. <laughs> King's Men and Casey, the pride of them all. The faces were loaded, the score was a tie, two outs, and the hour was late. The bleachers exploded, the excitement ran high when Casey stepped up to the plate. Oh, Casey's the guy with his eye on the ball, but mostly the ladies. Casey's the guy who's the idol of all, but mostly the ladies. 
Casey is mighty and manly. Casey's a dangerous gent. He gets when he goes to bat. Hang on to your hat. He's batting a thousand percent. With the ladies, oh, Casey has nerve and he knows every curve. He's no hokey pokey. He gets away with that old double play. He's sure okey dokey. Makes all the ladies go gaga, it's true. No wonder they swoon when he comes into view. He was the Sinatra of 1902. Casey, the pride of them all. Casey was wonderful, Casey was great. He swung the mightiest clout. They knew he would knock the ball out of the state. Alas, poor Casey. and a smidgen more mustard. If I'd have thought of this idea ten years ago, I'd have been a wealthy man by now. But no, I had to wait till taxes were sky high. <laughs> hey, Molly. Yes, McGee? I think I'm finally getting it. How's this for fragrance? Take a sniff. That's not bad at all, dearie. Mm. Rather a nice cologne. Yeah. Although, to be frank, it isn't particularly reminiscent of baseball. You mean you can't even detect the root beer, the rose water, and the nicotine I put into it? My gosh, I worked hard to get there. Come in. Oh, it's the old-timer, McGee. Hello, Mr. Old-timer. Oh, hi, old-timer. Hello there, kids. Hey, what do I smell in here? That your shaving lotion, Johnny? Does it smell like shaving lotion? Well, daughter, it smells either like shaving lotion or the stuff Papa used to cook up when we had that little cabin down in Tennessee. Oh, yes. I remember I used to ask Papa, Papa, I'd say in my childish way... <laughs> In my childish way, which some folks say I still got. <laughs> what is that stuff in that big copper kettle that Uncle Ruth pours into jugs and hides under the old stump? And Papa would just kind of chuckle and lure up me with a powder horn. <laughs> a powder horn? You mean your father still used to load his rifle with a powder horn? I didn't say nothing about a rifle, Johnny. Oh. The powder horn belonged to Mama. Oh. She put flour in it and used it for a compact. <laughs> And what was in the big copper kettle, Mr. Oldtimer? Maple syrup, I presume. <laughs> Daughter, there was two revenue men that was just dying to know the answer to that question, and they succeeded, too. In, in finding out? Nope, in dying. <laughs> Uncle Ruth got one of them right betwixt the ears, and Papa nailed Tyler one with a clean shot through the larynx. Wow. Mama was so proud she gave him how many grits and apple pan dowdy for dinner. <laughs> well, that's terrible. Shooting at revenue officers is a crime. Not in them parts when I was a young and daughter. No? Shooting at revenuers was just kind of considered a common citizen's protest against government interference with private enterprise. <laughs> Your family have any feuds down there in Tennessee? Oh, plenty, Johnny. <laughs> I was shot at four times before I was out of my three-cornered pants. Is that so? In fact, I was wounded before I was weaned. <laughs> outside the cabin one day, teething on a hunk of bacon rind, when I hear the shot. And I felt me a sharp pain in the stomach. Oh, you mean you got shot? Nope, but almost, daughter. Yeah. You see, we didn't have any safety pins in them days. Mama used to pin me with a long thorn. <laughs> the bullet had slugged through the wash tub, ricocheted off the plow blade, and drove that thorn half an inch into my little stomach. <laughs> Mama was so worried and upset, she took a hang strap and liked to beat my brains out. <laughs> But the government took all the fun out of feuding, too. How did they? Passed the law. Uh -huh. My cousin Clay came riding through the piney woods one day, all of a lather, just come from the county seat with the bad news. Put up your guns, fellas, he says. 
Government says this here feudin has got to be cleaned up. They just passed a legislation. What legislation was it? The pure feud laws, daughter. <laughs> we figured if we couldn't feud dirty, there was no fun feuding at all. <laughs> well, save me a gallon of whatever that stuff is, Johnny. I want to poison some devil grass. He didn't give me a chance to explain about my baseball cologne. Well, he's hardly the cologne type, dearie. <laughs> he's more of a more of a rugged individual. I see. Uh, did you say you thought you almost had the formula you yep, wanted? Just a few more experiments, and I'm ready to start dickering for a bottling works. Imagine me, the first man in America with enough imagination to capture the essence of baseball in men's cologne. Well, now we still have a name for it. No. As you said, no matter how attractive a product is, the name is very important. Yeah, we've got to get a good name. Maybe something like a, with a French tang to it. How do you say the fragrance in French? Le odeur. Le odeur. Le odeur. The fragrance of baseball. Mm-hmm. What's French for baseball? How about Osher? Osher? Does that mean baseball in French? If you say the whole thing fast, it means baseball in any language. Le odeur Osher. Le odeur Osher. Le odeur Osher. Le odeur Osher! <laughs> wow! I can just see the billboard. Get a bottle of Leo DeRocher, the essence of baseball. Why, that's terrific. Call Lexall. Call Walgreens. Call DeRocher. Yeah, call DeRocher, too. Boy, this is... It doesn't make a bit of difference how much water you use, a cup full or an ocean full. Water alone will not clean your car. No, sir, water cannot remove the shabby grime left by traffic fumes, bugs, tree sap, and oil. But just try Johnson's Car New. Why, it zips through all kinds of traffic tarnish. You see, Johnson's Car New contains effective, powerful cleaning ingredients that remove all dirt and stain. And because Car New is wax fortified, it polishes at the same time it cleans. That's right, Car New cleans and polishes in one easy application. You merely apply Johnson's Car New, rub a bit where traffic tarnish is stubborn, let dry to a white powder. Whisk off the powder, and your car is sparkling clean and shining. Just think, without hard buffing or rubbing, you can give your car the sparkle and luster of a brand new showroom shine. Try it, won't you? Give your car a Johnson's Car New beauty treatment. Johnson's Car New is the quickest, easiest way to bring out the beauty of your car. Look on the bright side, shine up the right side, bring out the beauty of your car. Ladies and gentlemen, if there was one thing the late war taught us, it is that no nation can wall itself off from the rest of the world and be either safe or prosperous. And there's no better time to emphasize this fact than during this week, which is World Trade Week. The economic prosperity of our country depends greatly on the business we do with other countries. Part of every dollar you make comes from world trade. So remember, good business helps toward peace. And peace is good business. Good night. Good night, all. The makers of Johnson's Wax Products, Racine, Wisconsin, bring you Phil McGee and Molly each week at this time. Be with us again next Tuesday night, won't you? Good night. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. This is WMAQ, NBC in Chicago.